Welcome back. This is the newspaper review final half hour right here. So uh, please keep your feedback coming in at K24 TV. You can also SMS us on 2122. Alex Chick says, I strongly agree with Ruto that some of these newspapers find it hard to sell without the tag Ruto on the front page. But you won't buy that narrative no matter how many times they will try to negatively tarnish his good name. Okay, Simunifu Dog. It's interesting about how uh, uh, Dr. Boni Alole is thrashing the Daily Nation paper just because of a headline which is against his boss. Yet he literally lives at the Nation Center. Uh, Doctor, do you want to address Simunifu? <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe that uh, in, in public discourse, right. there's nothing like uh, the right opinion. Right. If my opinion to me is perceived to be right, mm -hmm. it doesn't make your opinion wrong. Right. Your opinion is the other opinion. It's different. So he has his other opinion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And as always, we want your opinions uh, <laughs> on the show. So please keep them coming in at uh, K24 TV on the Twitter handle. Let's move on to the star, gentlemen. You From, know, uh -huh. you know, he's telling me that, and yet my boss. Uh -huh. Yeah. It is just because Ruto is a presidential candidate for 2022. Right. I have many other friends. Mm. Who, ha who are never referred to as being my bosses. Right. This one becomes a friend who is a boss because... He, He's running for president. For, for president. <laughs> so we have to live with it. Okay. Uh, it, it comes to the territory. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Indeed. <laughs> Let's look at the front page of the star now. Yeah. Governor's probe. Uh, bribery claims rock Senate uh, PAC. <laughs> Senator Kajuangu chairs <laughs> oversight committee. Rubbish claims and ask complainants to officially report on this. Uh, the headline saying some senators accused of demanding up to 20 million Kenya shillings uh, there. Uh, these are fresh bribery uh, allegations against the Senate's uh, watchdog committee. Uh, in there, of course, and they're going through uh, various reports that these allegations have touched on the sugar report uh, in 2018 mp is accused of receiving bribery uh, i mean receiving bribes in the toilets to reject sugar report right there uh, roraka land owner the senate uh, public accounts investment committee was accused of demanding bribes amounting to 100 million shillings from businessman francis mboro some members allegedly met the, uh, the alleged owner of the roraka land at a nairobi hotel and demanded money and they go on talking about different uh, the, the parliamentary service commission bribery claims right there and they go on and on uh, uh, giving different instances. We look at the house and the conduct of the house. Dr. Alwale, you've been in, in, in the Senate. And when they talk about, about this, this is not the first time it has been brought up. This is not the second time that has been brought up. They're saying that this doesn't happen, but the trajectory and the chronology of events uh, gives a different story as well. Uh, one is tempted to believe what the papers have written. Right. And uh, I am in a very good position Indeed. to tell viewers whether a chairman of an oversight committee, mm -hmm. like public accounts, like public investment, mm -hmm. uh, has the opportunity to receive a bribe. Do they? And the answer is yes. Is it not surprising that these allegations, one up to six, there are specific debts there? Right. Uh, when these things have taken place. Mm -hmm. How come when some of us were leading these committees, these instances were not there? Right. So the chair and the leadership and the membership of those committees, they better come clean. Because unfortunately, uh, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, we saw a confrontation between a senator and the CS Matiangi. Mm -hmm in Bobas, where the senator was telling the CS that they saved him. Mm -hmm. So the senator was actually admitting that these things do take place. Right. Yeah. The, back, the backroom deals do happen. Yeah, they do happen. He said it in public. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you missed it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the exchange between Senator Aaron Cheriot mm -hmm. and, and CS Matiangi. Mm -hmm. It was there for all who can. And it, it received front page right. uh, uh, reporting. Right. So these things are taking place. Uh, the senators must up their game and uh, they should just come clean. You know, when, when Dr. Lawley tells us that these things are happening and could be happening in the house uh, right now, yes. and you look at matters that are literally life and death, when you're talking about <coughs> sugar that has been yes, tainted with yes, mercury yes. and all of these things, your lives are on the line mm -hmm. when people are getting money in toilets. Because mm -hmm. I remember the speaker actually got uh, members of parliament to go to the toilet to see where the money could have exchanged hands, and all of this circus had happened there. Yes, yes, yes. But, the, but the allegations are pretty good. You know, Jeff, that's no longer an allegation, and I'm liking uh, what Dr. Tari has said. It's not only Dr. Tari who's confirming this. Mm -hmm. Remember, there's one MP who said, she's a woman rep, mm -hmm. she said she was just asked to go to the toilet 
and she got money and she didn't know what that money was for. Right. That just tells you that house stand accused. And it's quite dangerous when you put it in the way you've put it, that we are not even censoring, we are not even quick to censor things that are coming into this country that are contaminated. We are ending up feeding our society, right, with contaminated uh, foods. And when the bill goes too high, you cannot even deal with the ramifications. You've seen how, you know, cancer and other diseases mm -hmm. have actually mm -hmm. attacked this society. Mm -hmm. And half of this, and some of these great diseases that we are seeing, can actually be attributed to some of the things that are coming in. There are other jurisdictions where bringing something that's going to be consumed is, is, is more, is, it's, it's, it's tantamount to almost bringing an entire country to a stop. Right. You've seen when people go to airports carrying food. Mm -hmm. We're not even saying that food is contaminated and the hassle that they go through, mm -hmm. right? So that just tells you, parliament should act as the gatekeepers to society. That is the very least we should expect from them. But when you're hearing such reports, in fact, they are the ones, I mean, we, these are the people we elected, these are the people, Mashinani, they should be the one holding the fort to ensure that cartels and businessmen don't get or infiltrate the society with substandard goods. Mm -hmm. But look at the sugars that we are treated to. Look at the maize, the contaminated maize that we are, tell, we, are, we are being told about. But yet we still have a parliament that sits, deliberates, passes motions, and still cannot safeguard your interests in matters of health, in matters of ensuring that they you know, half of the things that we are talking about never get to you. So actually that house, both the Senate and Parliament, they stand accused. And it's up to them, like Dr. Ari has said, they must live up to the true meaning of why they exist. Mm -hmm. And for those who are bearing the, 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 the biggest grant mm -hmm. in this, all of us who are, you know, the citizens, the people who put them there, yep. the people who might take that tainted uh, sugar in their tea and mm -hmm. all of these other substandard mm -hmm. goods, mm -hmm. who should they demand for more accountability from? Because um, they're the ones who put them there. Do we want the ECC and the DCI to be more vigilant in terms of the members of the House? Who watches the watchdog? Because we're putting them there to be our safeguard. But clearly, there's a gap in our safeguard. So who monitors them? How do we get more from them? Uh, <clears throat> I think um, if we were to implement the 2010 constitution right. yeah. in its letter and spirit, mm -hmm. then we would attract the right minds in parliament. Many, and with due respect to them, many of them are my friends and former colleagues, a big number of them, they think you go into politics to make money. That's a lot. That's perception very many people have. Yes. To become rich. Mm. Mm. The, that is not the letter and spirit of the Constitution of Kenya. When it said that the following shall be the functions of Parliament mm. and therefore of parliamentarians, it should have mm. remained like that. But we have created an opportunity where members of Parliament, they wed into the arena of the executive powers. Mm. For example, why are members of Parliament controlling CDF. CDF was the precursor to devolution. Right. And when CDF had worked and it looked nice, just like John the Baptist came and baptized with water, mm -hmm. he said, Jesus shall come and baptize with the Holy Spirit. Right. John did not continue after Jesus, Jesus Christ came. came. Mm -hmm. So the CDF ended. That should have been a function of the devolved government. Right. and members of parliament to do exactly that, oversighting the implementation of budget. Now they don't do that, they control CDF, you go into the countryside and you see a project written and they say the patron is the member of parliament. <laughs> you know, when you follow what actually goes on, the patron literally controls who gets what project. And in the process, the normal procurement law is scattered because the people who are politically correct are the ones that the MP then allows to do those projects. And with due respect to them, I, I don't fear on matters of accountability, then they get their 10%.
But as a politician, you'll appreciate the fact that some uh, MPs will look at the fact that if you take, for example, the CDF from them on the ground, they need to show that they're doing something and have that political capital in their constituency. Exactly. When you go, when you e go e to Kakamega, exactly. Exactly. you can't say I was doing oversight in Nairobi. They want you to show us the school and exactly. all of these things. That so how do you delink that? Yeah, that's why I was saying, then if we were implementing the constitution to the letter and to the spirit, then members of parliament will see that I don't want to be, I don't want to go to parliament because I will not have a school mm. that I will show to the public. Mm -hmm. They'll say, I want to go to parliament because I'll demonstrate to the country that I am very good at legislation, I'm very good mm. at oversight, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. Let me, a true story. I know of a member of parliament who was the patron of his CDF, and his own brother was the manager of, is it manager or chairman, mm -hmm. whatever they call it, of the well, CBF. Mm -hmm. And that brother's wife was the one in charge of accounts. <laughs> so, I mean, a real story. The only thing I cannot do on, on live TV like this is to put their actual names. Mm -hmm. So if we have allowed it to go that far, <clears throat> then, in fact, uh, the National Cohesion and Integrity Commission mm -hmm. on issues like what I'm saying, what are they doing? They should go and ask the MP, how can you be the patron? Your brother is the head of CDF and his wife. Those are the things that we should be helped with. It's right. criminal activity. Right. Yeah. And even as you talk about the fact that it is the implementation <laughs> of the constitution, yeah. yet we are uh, smelling a referendum around the corner. That's the debate we're having. Should we just implement what we have first of all? Do, do because know? clearly we haven't done it justice less than a decade and we want to change it. And there are some issues, even when it comes to our parliamentarians, for example. Dr. Halwale has uh, actually said something of quite importance. And uh, he said, we need to know the people we vote in. True to the fact, he's a medical doctor. Mm. Must count for something. That education must count for something. Yeah. Dr. Riboni, and I'm not... Uh, you know, uh, blowing his horn. The fact that he is that educated counts for something. You cannot compare him with somebody who does not have vast knowledge. And this is something I am seeing people do day in, day out. And even some leaders who do not have that kind of capability or capacity, they'll go and tell you, ah, even them they fail. Still, you cannot compare the two. Today, and this is where, you know, we as Kenyans must have a very hard conversation. Is the fact that we do not have knowledge or the excitement, our excitement to vote in people precede that knowledge actually puts us as a country in the back burner. If I take you to Madare Hospital today, and we put somebody like Daktari in the midst of all those madmen, and we ask them, choose among you who your leader is. They will not choose him. They will choose one of their own. Mm -hmm. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because they do not vote. Or as a people, we do not vote for responsibility. We vote for similarity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the problem we have as a country. The fact that we are unable to rise up and see who can make change, not somebody who I'm similar to, who can make, who can bring about the desired transformation of a nation is what we have not gotten right. And this is why you find people who come from nowhere, have gone past chapter six, and even our courts cannot stick to their guns and say, hang on, you cannot hold public office because of A, B, C. Yeah. So we are pumping people just because the majority has acclaimed that's my leader. We are bringing them to the leadership mantle and they have no idea, no iota, no clue of where, of where this country should be heading. That is the major problem we have, not only in, in, in Kenya, but in Africa. If you look at how the other jurisdictions are run, how other countries are run, and I've made many cases about how people have gone on, great nations have gone on to elect their leaders, you will see that we are at a flaw. The system, Jeff, that we use today to reward and elect our leaders is very flawed. 
So for us, it's more adherence to chapter 6. Not only chapter 6. All our leaders. Not only chapter from an, 6. From an individual level. Yes, mm. not only chapter 6. Mm. We need to get people who have the knowledge and the idea of transforming a country. Okay. We cannot just be raising and saying, oh, no, 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 this guy is similar to me. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, he thinks like I think. And no, we will always get it wrong. We need to find somebody. We need to find people. Okay, Whether it's through the county machinani, we need to find people who resonate with transformation. Okay. And, and, and you know, this point uh, that my brother is raising mm. is not that it is not doable. It is doable. Yes. This country remembers very well that when the late Dr. Bonaya Kodana, the late Dr. Guraj Kalgaro, Mother Karua, mm. Kitobu Imanyara mm -hmm. would stand in their place mm. to address parliament. Mm -hmm. You, 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 you mm -hmm. would want to listen. Mm -hmm. Now we are slowly moving from that kind of quality of representation yes. in parliament. Mm. And now we want to open up that space to just about anybody. Correct. This constitution that uh, uh, ODM wants to change through that funny thing they call BBI. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it is so well written. If you were to implement it, for example, mm -hmm. to cure mm -hmm. all these things that he has spoken to, all you have to do is to implement chapter six. True. Let's On leadership and integrity. Okay. And you sorted it out. <laughs> okay. you, do not have to, you do not have to create a prime minister. Okay. Ah, no. Okay, gentlemen. <laughs> okay, your point is gotten on that one. We'll move on from that because uh, fidelity to the constitution and, of course, chapter six. Right there. Let's move on to a story that brought into, I mean, exposed, really, uh, the lack of uh, service we have and yes. the ferry services yes. at that particular point. Yes. What we thought we had, yes. really we didn't. And now is when, uh, after two senseless loss of lives, we've yes. seen the video really heart-wrenching video when yes. you watch uh, the car just disappearing into the ocean right there. Now we realize even the vessels that we have should have been decommissioned 10 years ago, how 2010. How soon are we forget, Jeff? And, you know, condolences to the mother and daughter who perished. It should have been different. Should have been alive to the fact that at this point, at this juncture, we should have ready equipment to deal with such catastrophe. It's not far ago in 1994, when we lost so many people in the Mtongwe ferry. Mm -hmm. Question is that we need to ask, what do we learn from these tragedies? And I've always said, and this is a good thing, we need to understand, and it's, uh, we, we should not try as much to reinvent the wheel. People deal with calamities on a daily basis, you know? And what happens after an incident is what actually brings out to the fore whether you have learned of that particular outcome or not. Right. You see, every time a plane goes down, multi-grouping of, of professionals, they come together and ask, why did this plane go? You, we are still talking about the Ethiopian Airlines that went down and yeah, the line that went down, right. the Boeing. Have you seen what has been going on in the US? Engineers are coming to see how it would, and they are sitting to even change the dynamics of that particular aircraft. We move on why? Why? Because they want a situation like that to never happen again. That is the kind of knowledge and spirit we should be bringing. We should have learned from Mutongwe Ferry Dr. Lohan, to a certain that such an incident never, never happens, happens again. again. We're looking at the fact that uh, government spokesman uh, Colonel Loguna talking yesterday about the fact that they haven't managed to uh, get the bodies out as of now. Uh, as of today, the Chinese are supposed to bring in some divers as well to try and recover the bodies uh, and uh, the wreckage that's there as well. But even as a government tries to deal with that, when it comes to preventive measures, as uh, Gabriel has spoken about, we have ferries that don't have barriers when they're in, uh, uh, going between uh, that particular point. Uh, we're looking at decommissioned, very old ferries as well. Do we need a disaster to happen so that we can look at a particular sector, a school to collapse so that we audit schools, mm -hmm. a ferry to have an accident so we have ferries yeah. to be looked at? Is that what we need in terms of government action? I, I have not checked very carefully, but uh, as late as yesterday, uh, the CS, I think it is Masharia, mm -hmm. had not come out right. clearly mm -hmm. and loudly on, the issue. on this issue. True. What we are speaking to is the issue of policy. And when policy goes wrong, you keep away the principal secretary, the person who takes 
responsibility is the CS. And therefore, the person who should have led us in this case of Likoni and the disaster of the school that collapsed on children should have been Masharia and Magoha, Professor Magoha, respectively. Mm -hmm. Now, it is not a question of reinventing the wheel. Where you have a, a ferry facility like the one you have, there are certain minimum standards that are supposed to be made. One, there is a 24-hour Coast Guard. This Coast Guard is, is it, it's just around. It's just around waiting just in case anything happens. Then, we are supposed to have lifeboats. I have a video that was captured by a member of the public, an, an amateur video. Mm -hmm. How this vehicle took a painful right. five to ten minutes before it sank. Mm -hmm. There was sufficient time, if there was a coast guard, if there were lifeboats, there was sufficient time for them to approach that vehicle and at least pull out mm. the baby and the mother. This is a question of policy. Right. Number two, again on social media, we have been given information that there is an administration police officer who was very good at deep sea diving mm -hmm. and he had saved very many lives. They have put there his photograph. This guy, because they differed with somebody in the office, he was given a transfer to Narok. So one of our best deep sea divers is an AP working in Narok there when he should have been at Likoni right, Ferry right. doing this work. Mm -hmm. I don't want us to be pessimistic because it is very painful to the family. But knowing that uh, that uh, ocean is infested with sharks, maybe they're wasting time trying to look for the bodies. Right. Yeah. It's very painful. Uh, and I'm sorry, uh, Masharia, on this one, you should resign before lunchtime today. As of yesterday, I think he got uh, the PS to be in charge of the task force in terms, when he had his press conference, after his silence, he came yes. in and said the PS is going to be in charge of the task force uh, in recovery of the body and what's happening at uh, the ferry uh, right now. So you wait and see what comes uh, out of that. But even as we bring do, this... Do, do you know, Kenyans are now, I, I'm starting to like social media mm -hmm. more than the mainstream media. They even showed us on the day of the, uh, the morning or, or following the tragedy, mm -hmm. Uh, the Kenya ferry uh, handle, mm -hmm. you know, social handle, the TL, had tweeted wishing people a good day. As if it, nothing had happened. As if nothing had happened. Yeah. So, again, it's a question of integrity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they also came out to say that that's not a verified account, so there's still speculation whether it's oh, theirs or not. Aware. Now the loophole comes <laughs> in on, on that. I like the way you protect them. <laughs> uh, but even as you come to a close, not protecting, just putting it out there uh, for, for them as well, uh, as they clarify that. But as we come to a close, of course, we'll have to have our parting shots uh, this morning. Uh, Gabriel, we start with you. And again, I think my parting shot will be on how we deal with tragedies. I think we need to learn from them, right? We do not need to wait, like you said, for another school to come down. You remember how we've been seeing fires? We started with, with a fire in, 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 in uh, was, it, was it in Meru? And it came to Machakos back in the day. The other day, it was Moigals. What have we put in place? What policy, what structures have we erected to ensure that this never happens again? Mm -hmm. And probably we may not, at the very least, cut the casualties. But we may actually bring it to an all-time low. Okay. to ensure that even these things, even if they do happen, we are able not only to arrest them, but to ensure the casualty is actually put to an all-time law. The other thing is this, this, this matters of uh, ferries, and we've been told for many, many uh, times. To me, it still continues to count as an accident looking for a place to happen. Something else will happen. Today, if another car veers off the ferry, it will go the same way. Why? What have we done? Right. What have we put in place to ensure that? Even if somebody puts the reverse gear or uh, this, uh, uh, disengages the, 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 the handbrake, will the car roll back to the ocean? Right. What, 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 what have we done? So I think we need, we, we, we need to have a serious learning curve on how we deal with these tragedies. Okay. Dr. Halwale, your part in short. Uh, just uh, two points. Eh? When you look at the picture of that ferry, the ferry was in motion. Mm -hmm. And what is expected is that uh, the coxman 
the moment he puts the ferry in motion, he's supposed to engage so that the ramp lifts up mm -hmm. and locks so that mm -hmm. any car that attempts to roll back mm -hmm. then is mm -hmm. stopped by that particular uh, ramp which is raised. He did not do it. Wow. Yeah, the, the picture is, there, is clear mm -hmm. on that video. The vehicle is just mm -hmm. rolling off and right. goes in there. Why didn't he engage? that uh, clear mechanical safety mechanism of every ferry right. that is in motion uh, anywhere in the waters of the world. The second point I want to say is I have seen in today's paper, in the Star, not in the Star, the people in the People Daily, mm. uh, that uh, some officer is banning gold mining in Vihiga. That is not the way to solve it. They are saying if you are found doing gold mining, you're going to be arrested and blah, blah, blah. And there's a beautiful photograph of one of my cousins there mm -hmm. uh, engaged in the exercise. I want to inform this officer that this dangerous gold mining has been there from 1952. And that is how some of us have ended up going to school because our parents risk their lives to raise some little money to, to, to make ends meet. You cannot just burn it. It will not stop. The government should have a clear policy on how to handle gold mining in Kakamega and in Vihiga because it is ongoing. Okay. Yeah. okay. So again, a policy issue that you've yeah, raised yeah. right there. And that's where we draw curtains as far as the newspaper review is concerned this morning. As always, Gabriel Muthuma, thank you so much for your time uh, you. this morning to share your story. Dr. Uh, Boni Halole as well as Antisana. Uh, we make sure that we do this again uh, right here. Your views, please continue bring them in at K24 TV or you could also SMS us on 21222 with what has been discussed here, what you're seeing on the dailies and what you feel is uh, the best way forward as far as the views on the news is concerned. We take a break. We are back on the other side as we get interactive. Good morning.